Welcome back. So this is part four of four. Uh, the first part, we, we opened a box of various hockey memorabilia. The second and third, it was both Canucks, which was awesome. And of course, these are from a subscriber who didn't have any use for these items and was like, hey, do you want them? And of course, my answer is, <laughs> yeah. And, and my answer is, yeah, because again, uh, it is really, really interesting to have this stuff and to be able to... Um, have it handy for when I'm doing historical videos. Usually during the summer, usually at this time of year. So my year's all thrown off. And I know everybody's year's thrown off, so it shouldn't be a surprise. But what he also gave me as well with this, and I was saving it until now. I'm pretty sure it hasn't been seen on any camera in the background is uh, this. So this is a New York Americans. It's an Ebbets Field flannels, vintage athletic wear jersey. Now I've seen... Uh, where these guys make Seattle Metropolitan's jerseys. And, of course, it's a sweater. So this is where the difference is between sweater and jerseys. This, to me, is a sweater. So I've had that debate before. People are like, it's, they're all sweaters. Nah, they, when they were wool and when they were actually, you know, sweaters, to me, they were sweaters. So this is a sweater. Those are jerseys. And because this is a sweater, uh, I won't hang it in here because if you... You hang this, there's the, the chance that it'll stretch out of shape and all that. So I have a Bruins sweater as well, which does not hang in here either. That's actually in my closet in the room. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm very, that's really, really cool that I've got that now, that I've got a New York Americans. It is a double XL, so it's more for a discussion piece rather than wearing because um, on me, it let's just hold this up here. Yeah, it's to my knees. Yeah, so that's that's not going to work as an actual shirt I would wear. Now let's get into what's in this box. And we've got annuals, annuals, annuals. There's 94 95 with Burry on the cover. So lots of hockey yearbooks. Some of the hockey yearbooks I have aren't in fantastic condition, so I will go through and compare these with the ones that I have. Oh, I don't have this one. I don't have 1989. I don't think I do anyways. Again, I'll go through and I'll double check. 1986. You know what's you know what's kind of funny is I now have three of this one. So, <laughs> someday we'll have a giveaway. Channel giveaway. Who would like a Paul Coffee? Uh, Bertuzzi, 102, 2000, 2001. Yeah, all of them. Look at that. Oh, 98, 99, and it's got... So again, part of the interesting thing with this is that you get you get different covers too. The Hockey News does different covers. Now, and here, Flames. Now, where what year is that from? Because that's Jim Poplinski. That is from 1982, October 15th, 1982. Jim Poplinski and the Flames. That is cool. There's more yearbooks in here. 1985 with Messier. 84, 83, 82. Pool guides. The the pool guides, it's interesting. So every year they do the, the, the pool guides. And I, I know I have all of them, I, I think. But I, I don't know how many of them I'm able to find at this time. So it's kind of nice to have one of these. And of course with the pool guide. So let's just go through really quick here with the pool guide. Um, and I'll try to find a good example here of why I like the pool guides. Uh, Mike Ribeiro, who played 116 games at that point, they projected him for 39 points. Ribeiro needs to take his game to the next level. He responded towards the end of last season, seven points in one five-game stretch, and has the potential to be Montreal's second-line center. So there you go. Uh, Ryan Precht, Richards, Rive, that's Gary Roberts. Yeah, this is just great. Oh, and there's Luke Robitaille. He shows just the NHL logo next to his name because that's before he signed with the Kings. Robitaille won't be playing in Detroit this season, but another team will surely take a chance on the veteran scorer. He should have enough left in the tank to put up medium-level points. 
And then he went to L.A., and he put up a pretty decent point total there. Miroslav Shaitan. Oh, they projected him for 80 points. Give Shaitan full marks for consistency. It doesn't matter how poorly the Sabres player who his line mates are. Shaitan suits up every game and earns his points. That is pretty cool. So yeah. Then and again, I like I like going through I like going through the pool guides. I used to like going through them at the end of the year and seeing where they're right and where they're wrong. And there I mean there's trends like with with stuff like that, like the whole stats thing. Obviously I'm a stats guy. People know that about me. Um it, it is interesting to see how players trend up and then trend down. And trying to figure out exactly when that's going to happen is is difficult. Wow, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, nineteen seventy. Wow, that is fantastic, nineteen seventy. Yes, this is before I was born. Smart asses. BC Lions. What year is this from? Nineteen eighty. So BC Lions from nineteen eighty. Calgary Stampeders. From back then as well. This is all CFL, CFL Illustrated. So that is interesting. Might be fun to go through there. Oh, a couple of Breakaway magazines. Yes! Okay, so, uh, all right. First off, a couple of Breakaway magazines. Welcome 91, 92 seasons. They're the same one. And I said yes. I did a little cheer because I have been looking for this yearbook. This is one of the ones I don't have. And I, I love it. Bob Gainey, NHL's most complete player. That, of course, was the last of their, their Stanley Cups in that run. Of course, they got one in 86 as well. I didn't have this one. Awesome. That is... Yes. That's great. I'll go through all the rest, too. Oh, and then the NHL's the official yearbooks. So every year, I would have the official yearbook. And the official yearbook was the heart winner. And then eventually they, they stopped. But it, it was really kind of cool to know the heart winner was going to be on the cover. So that is nice. I'm That makes me happy. That is really cool adding that. Hockey Digest 8990 preview. Experts predictions, teams that are tough to beat. Oh, they got Vancouver near the bottom, so it checks out. It's 8990. I'm not saying smack where it's not warranted. Uh, Inside Hockey Yearbook 94. Rising stars meet hockey super prospects, and there's Alexander Dagg. Drink them in, boys and girls. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, the ultimate pool guide. Hockey news. Another inside hockey yearbook. I never had an inside hockey yearbook. Yeah, I don't think I ever had one of these. I don't think I did. Confident Habs ready to make run for Cup again. And this is from 1992. So, yeah. Ch that checks out, too. Team-by-team -team predictions and schedules. Hockey News Season Preview 93-94. Beautiful Jets Solani jersey. Ninety ninety one NHL Preview. Oh, very fun. And, and, you know, the interesting thing, too, is that... I will say this. Oh, they got... Yeah, yeah you're in photos, too. You're in photos, 1990. And there's there's Tikkanen. I'm sure nobody understood what he was saying there. The Oilers won the cup. There's Lindros with the Ottawa Generals. Oh, there's Borier Salming. That was his last year. Yari Curry. Oh, that is awesome. Pittsburgh Penguin goaltender Tom Barrasso had to leave the team February 9th to be with his two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Ashley, who was undergoing treatment for cancer. He did not return to the NHL team until the beginning of the 90-91 season. Chicago's Dave Manson repeatedly ran afoul of hockey authorities. He said he's a marked man. All right, I'll get that. No worries. That's the problem with stacking stacking yearbooks. And I should know better. And yet, I don't. Because, of course I don't. 
Buffalo's Mike Ramsey really sticks it to Montreal's Mike Keane. So see, back in the old days, that's not really a slash or anything. Nothing wrong with that. That's just a good old-fashioned uh, stick to the ear, which technically a stick to the ear isn't a penalty. Oh, this might have been. Um, Brian Trotchian mercifully introduces the head of Washington Capital, Dino Cicerelli, to the end boards. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that Cicerelli wasn't happy with that one. And there's, there's Ray Ferraro showing Cam Neely how he feels about Cam Neely. So somebody should show Ferraro that picture. I, I may I may take a photo of that with my with my phone and tag him in it on, on Twitter. Cause that that's that's a pretty wicked two hander from the looks of things. That is so oh, right on. Comic actor John Candy had to drop drop into Manhattan and Madison Square Garden if he wanted to visit old LA friend Bernie Nichols. So they talk about the Bernie Nichols deal in there too. That is really cool. Alright. So I got stuff to clean up. I will do so. And uh, that's awesome. So, again, thanks. I have the greatest subscribers. I, I think greatest subscriber base on the internet. Maybe all of the internets. Maybe the multiple internets around the world. But thank you guys so much for being a part of it. Uh, there is going to be a live stream today for NHL 20. I don't know if it's going to send out notifications. Because sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. There's nothing I can do on my end other than... Helmet's not sending out notifications, to which they usually answer with, is it sending them out now? No. How about now? No. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And again, uh, this, is, this is the kind of stuff that will lead to more video ideas once we reach... This off-season, we're going to have like an odd off-season. I may have time to do a series of some sort. But uh, the, the history, the year-by-year, year, that kind of thing, likely that returns the next off-season, which could be 2024, assuming we still have calendars and years and everything isn't on fire. I'll get back to you guys. Thanks so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.